Hello and welcome to lesson two on how to use the OneNote Time Planner template. In today's lesson I'm going to show you the navigational interface that I've built into the template and we're also going to have a look at step one, the life planning process. Before we get started you might have noticed that my OneNote is looking a little bit strange this week. That's because I downloaded the OneNote 2010 beta on the weekend. So you can see OneNote's been given a nice ribbon interface, which doesn't really concern us today because the time planner template's still in OneNote 2007 format. So let's get started. Click on the Start Here tab and click on the Time Planner Process Flow tab. The Time Planner Process Flow outlines seven steps. This is a top down time planning system. Uh, Top-down systems are based on the work of authors like uh, Stephen Covey or Anthony Robbins and the approach is to start with the important stuff in your life first, such as life planning, goal setting, and from them you will be able to develop categories and projects that work towards achieving your higher goals. A bottom-up system on the other hand, such as advocated by David Allen in the Getting Things Done series, starts with task captures which build up to a daily planning process which feed into projects which eventually may feed into categories or align with goals. Um, the time planner template can be used in either way, either as a top down or a bottom up system and it's compatible with getting things done and uh, Anthony Robbins time of your life. Uh, but it's really set up as a top down system. So the first step in the top-down system is what I like to call the life planning phase. Um, there's seven steps in the life planning phase. They're all optional. You could skip this step if you really wanted to to start with. If, if, if it feels a bit intimidating to start with mission statements and core values, then you can jump right into the goal workshop or even just start capturing tasks. You can always come back to this later. Uh, the first step in the, in the process to, is to create a pers personal mission statement. A personal mission statement should be aspirational. Um, don't agonise over this too much. Just jot down a few thoughts. Mission statements frequently start with, I believe, or my purpose is. Um, you can have it a public mission statement or you can have it completely private. It's up to you. If you want some help on how to create mission statements, then uh, Stephen Covey goes into this in a great deal of detail in a few of his books. Um, the next step I think is important is to think about your core values. I've listed a set of 30 or so aspirational values that are appropriate to pick from. Uh, it'll get you started. I recommend sticking with about five or six values. These are not necessarily values that you're perfect at. Um, they should be values that you believe are important and that you aspire to. Uh, the next step is to list the feelings and emotions you wish to experience on a daily basis. So you should be able to pick the emotions and the experiences that you want to experience um, and not be driven by events and activities around you. Uh, next step is to list a set of daily drills about what you want to do or think or feel on a daily basis. Next step is to list your rules of conduct. This is based on some early works by the American philosopher uh, Ben Franklin and it's a good idea to set your own standard rules by which you wish to live. And finally, developing a master list of questions. This is based on the work of Marilee Adams so that you ask yourself self-fulfilling and positive questions rather than getting into a negative question rut. That's about all there is for life planning and all there is for our lesson today. Next week I want to look at the goal setting process which is a lot of fun. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you later. Bye.